Don't worry, I'm a paramedic. Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to day 10 here on the 31 Days of Horror. I'm your host Moon616 and thank you once again for stopping in guys. Yeah, day 10 is here and I've got yet another one from Anchor Bay here. Uh, this one right here, I didn't really know a whole lot going into it, but you know, of course this one right here is starring Kane Hodder and Bill Mosley. And you know, as much as I love those guys, you know, they tend to play in a lot of really, really bad films at times too, but they played in a lot of good films too, so I had no idea what to expect from this one. As far as I knew that they were uh, not just doing like minor cameos, they were actually technically like the main characters in this film, so it had me even more excited because there's so many films out there that we all know. You see Kane Hodder, Bill Mosley's name on the cover or whatever in the credits, and they're always high in the credits, but they have like a two minute cameo. That's not the case of this one. They actually are, you know, the full fledged like main characters, basically the main antagonists in this film. And this one, of course, is from 2015 and it's called Old 37. Yeah, right there. So Kane Hodder, of course, Bill Mosley in the background. Yeah. So getting to the premise of this one, uh, it's basically about two brothers, uh, Kane Hodder and Bill Mosley. Um, you know, they are very kind of psychotic brothers, actually. Uh, and they simply, what they do is they, they intercept 911 calls on this kind of desolate road um, that they, you know, that they pursue. Um, and what they do is they intercept 911 calls from accidents and they go out there to the accident scenes and they're not there to help you, but they are there to actually basically kidnap you, take them back, the people back to the... Uh, uh, the junkyard and where they reside and they torture people so they are just sadistic fucks uh, basically on a parallel storyline you have a young girl who you know is kind of you know very lo low self-esteem she is you know just kind of an outcast in a way she's just had a falling out with her best friend and of course her best friend actually ends up getting killed in the beginning of this film and in a kind of nasty road accident and stuff like that now uh, basically what happens in the film, you know, she becomes friends with, uh, you know, some other people and stuff and something happens to them which actually kind of affects our antagonist played by, of course, Bill Mosley and um, uh, Kane Hodder and of course they end up going after her and her friends and yeah, so you got your film right there. Now my thoughts on this one. Now I'll start with, you know, the script. The script is a fucking mess. This movie is an absolute mess. Um, I'm really not a big fan of stories and, you know, motives and stuff like that are told through kind of flashbacks and just very choppy editing and stuff. This one right here, you kind of see the, you know, you get the motives are told by flashbacks of, you know, the antagonists and it just doesn't really work for me at all. Um, you know, there's even some, you know, kind of flashbacks and stuff to things that have happened with like your main protagonists and stuff like that too, which again, did not really like. And I think the biggest problem with with the movie actually is the characters themselves. I mean, obviously we're not supposed to like the antagonist, but the, all the protagonists in this film, not likable. No one is likable. Even the lead girl, which her name escapes me right now, is very not that likable. You know, she's kind of whiny. Um, she's got very kind of like low self-esteem, like I said, and she, you know, has issues, you know, she basically in the film wants like a boob job and stuff and her, of course her mom's willing to get her that, uh, which I won't get into that whole thing because it's just ridiculous in the film. There's a lot of character development in this film that doesn't really lead anywhere because you essentially don't care for these characters at all because you spend so much time with, you know, flashbacks and certain things that are going on in the film that really don't even kind of add up. It's very choppy. I can see why the the director actually took his name off this film and, and used a pseudonym, pseudonym, you know, to put this film out because, you know, he definitely lost a lot of creative control over this one or whatever, but the script is probably not what he intended to, you know, or the final product or what is not intended, you know, was not his intentions or whatever, because this one just feels like a, a fucking mess. Um, the effects in the film though, not bad. You know, everything in the film's not actually that bad. You know, the effects are actually pretty good. Um, I have to say, there's not a lot of kills in this one, surprisingly enough, for a storyline where you got two psychotic brothers going into accidents and, you know, kidnapping and killing people, 
there's not really a lot of effects. The opening scene in the film is probably one of the better ones, but I was actually expecting this one to be a lot more gory. With that said, they are practical effects, which is kind of a major, major bonus for a film like this. Because if you have CGI in a film like this, it's really not going to work. It's going to take away even more from the film. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of a bonus for the film. Um, you know, getting back to a little more things, you know, the music in the film, I really like the score. I thought the score, like the main theme you can hear in the background right now is kind of cool, but the overall soundtrack, they're playing like a lot of kind of pop radio, you know, rock band songs and stuff, and I really hate those soundtracks, man. It just, I mean, it, it feels appropriate for, you know, the type of film that it is, because it's, you know, essentially almost like a teen slasher film. So the music, but for me, it did not work. I, it was it was actually kind of annoying to, my, to me. Um, but yeah, the, the biggest thing with this film is just, the, the script is a fucking mess. It really is a mess. And uh, I don't know, man. I just... Uh, I The whole end of this film is just a disaster, too. There's something that happens in the third act, um, you know, with the brothers. And I'm just like, yeah, I can see why that's happening. But at the same time, it doesn't make any sense. And then the last scene happens and you're like, what the fuck? Like, uh, it just doesn't make any sense. Total mess of a film. You know, there is a couple decent things in this one. It doesn't really bring anything new to the genre at all. Um, you know, and of course, like I've said before, you know, these type of films don't necessarily have to bring anything new to be good. This one just was very generic and falls into that generic pile. Uh, I read somewhere that, you know, Kane Hodder's son actually thought this was like his, was his favorite film that his dad was in. Uh, apparently his son has not seen any other Kane Hodder films because if this is his favorite film, my God. Um, you know, I will say though, Bill Mosley actually was pretty decent in the film. Kane Hodder, of course, has another non-speaking role throughout the film. He wears a mask and he doesn't really speak. He's kind of played off as like the dumb, big, you know, retarded brother. And I use that word because he's called that in the film. Um, but overall, not very enjoyable. I hated the characters in this film. Sucked so bad. Uh, but I will say there's actually like an uncredited cameo from Lloyd Coffin in this film. Uh, which is, I guess, kind of a spoiler, but it's not its not even a funny cameo or anything. It's just kind of randomly placed in the film, so I don't know. Old 37, if you're wondering what the title's referring to, it's referring to the ambulance that they use, and like I said, there is, you know, a reason for why they're doing this and stuff, which is told through flashbacks and stuff, so uh, not a big fan of it. If I had to rate this one, I already put it down. If I had to rate this film, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10 because the effects were good enough. There was elements of the film I did enjoy, but just not memorable. This is one that I would not want to seek out and watch, so sorry about that, guys, if you're interested in watching that. But of course, once again, that is just my opinion. So yeah, if you want to check it out, it comes out, I believe, October 13th, this Tuesday also. So I mean, at least in Canada, it does anyways. I think it's already been on VOD in the States and stuff like that. So, But check it out, released by Anchor Bay in Canada, if you want. I don't recommend it. I thought it was kind of shitty. But that's going to do it for day 10, guys. See you guys in day 11. Peace out, homies. <laughs> it's like the worst quote ever on here. Hotter and Mosley are bigger than life. No, not really. I mean, not with this film. Delicious IPA.